Hi, and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. I'm Lisa Curcio. And my name is Gina Curcio Holly, better known as her daughter. We're thrilled to have you with us tonight. Today is Monday. It is June 27th. The year is 2022, and we are streaming live right here on YouTube. Yes. We have an amazing card technique for you that uses designer series paper scraps. It's called the Twisted Ribbon Technique. But guess what? We're going to teach it to you two different ways. She's got a way and I got a way. And if you're not familiar with it, we never stamp together. We don't. We each have our yeah. own studios. We stamp in our own presence with no one else with us. Yep. And then we come together literally an hour or so before the live. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. And she's like, that's really cool. And we learned out that we did it differently. And we can't wait to teach you both ways. Now, there's a couple things about tonight's live that we want you to know about. Mm -hmm. First and foremost is the project sheet. Yes, and you're gonna wanna make sure that you stick around for that if you're here live with us because besides the two samples that we have to share with you live, we have eight total ideas in those samples for you and that's gonna be made available in the project sheet. You're probably wondering what that is. It is. The project sheet includes multiple pictures, cutting dimensions, and all the supplies for tonight's cards. It's going to be the two that we demonstrate simultaneously as well as the six additional samples. Tons of inspiration for you. And we would love to interact with you tonight to have you chat and comment with us. Mm -hmm. You can do that by logging into your Gmail account so you can chat live with us. And that's on YouTube, not on us. Mm -hmm. So make sure you do that because we'd love to say hi to you. Also, we want to make sure for those of you that are here in the live chat that we have moderating with us tonight. Yes. Obviously, she's here, so she can't be <laughs> moderating. So we have Bob Curcio. You'll see his name in blue. That is Bob the Builder, for those of you that wonder. Or my dad. Or her dad. Yeah. He's great at the links, not great at the stamping part. So we also have Marion Lenhart. Yes, and Marion's a part of our stamp studio team, and we absolutely adore her. She is so talented mm -hmm. in all things crafting, especially stamping. So if you have a question, make sure you at her in the live chat so you can go ahead and ask that. But do know that she is just one person, so if she doesn't get to your question, head on over to Lisa's Stamp Studio dot com and click on that contact button and we will be happy to answer that question for you absolutely now i'm just going to give you a little teaser before we go too far we've got something really special for you next week and we're going to announce it tonight so you're going to want to stay with us it also involves a product giveaway i know Ooh, fun, stuff, stuff. Fun, fun stuff <laughs> okay but before we get started i have one more thing i want to share with you let me just change screens here party with the stamp studio is coming up if you have not registered, there is still time. We would love to meet you. It does not matter where you're coming from. We are going to have a four-hour event on Saturday, um, August 13th. I'm almost said October. I'm in, <laughs> fall, I'm, in, I'm in a fall mode. So it's August 13th. It's going to include lunch, make and takes. There's going to be all kinds of prize patrols and lots and lots of fun. You can find all the information on how to register and join us over on my website. It'll pop up if you just give it a few seconds or you can hit the shop tab and then there's a drop down there for party with the stamp studio. Okay, we're ready to get started. Let's get stamping. All right, I'm moving the buttons out of the way, Gina. <laughs> we did this last time. Yes, last live. time the button got hit. Yes. All right, we are ready to get started. Now, Gina and I, as I had said to you, did this technique two different ways. We did. So I want you to start with yours. The one thing that we did is we actually use the exact same little tick mark measurements, correct? We did. Okay, now you're gonna notice that my piece is longer than Gina's, and you're gonna notice hers is narrower than mine. I want you to know the best part about this technique is there's no rules. There isn't. Yeah. You can make this as wide, as long, as short, as narrow as you want. And you'll see that reflected in all eight of our samples. Exactly. Because each idea is different. Correct. And we did that on purpose. Yeah. So I'm going to let Gina show you how she did her tick marks. And then I'm going to show you how I did mine. Yes. And these tick, tick marks are super important for when we make this twisted ribbon. Because right. this is literally how it works. Right. So... The important tip is for this size, mine and yours, is that you tick it every half inch. Okay. So I just have my paper trimmer. This is my favorite paper trimmer ever because it has this clear arm. You have your cutting and your scoring blades just right on this. It has an extendable arm, goes all the way out to 11 inches. 12, 17. 17 inches, my bad. Perfect for <laughs> you scrapbookers or for larger slimline cards. Yeah. All right, so let me go ahead and put this in there. 
what I'm doing is I'm just lining it up right at that half mark, which is right on the right hand side. I love that. Don't you love the straight ledge? Yep, and I go ahead and put that piece of paper all the way up to the top and I'm just taking one, two, and then I'm mushing it all the way to the one, that's another half inch, one, two, and all you're gonna do is go all the way down to the end, okay? And then you just keep going to the half inch. So you're just moving it now on this side, yep. just to make it easier. Perfect. And then when it's all done, it'll look a little bit like this. Okay, now the tick marks I want you to know are just for the placement of the designer paper scraps. So yep. I don't not want to see it. Right, yep. I don't want people to kind of freak out. All right, so um, I love my trimmer. You know that I almost do everything on it, but I use the grid sheets. You do. Now we make the grid sheets larger in my online store. They're also six by six to fit the stamp positioning tool. But I did it this way. I just lined it up on here and I'm just gonna line it up at the one so it's easier for you to actually see. The grid lines on here are gonna make life so, so easy. And of course you can use a ruler or a T-square. Of course that works. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make a tick mark here at the half and I'm gonna follow that grid line. Do you see it right here? Again, and then two and then across and then two and a half and there, here's that grid line again. And I did this all the way across like Gina did. Now, just not like Gina did. I didn't do this ahead of time. So you're gonna to have to watch me make my little <laughs> tick marks. Again, if you're just joining us, we wanna make sure you stick with us for the live. We have a real fun announcement to share with you for next Monday. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to tell you, you're gonna notice there's two tick marks here near the bottom mm -hmm. that are clearly not a half an inch. Yes, but we have fun. We do. Yeah. And I'm going to teach you how to manipulate that. Awesome. All right. So do you want to go first or should I? Well, I use liquid glue. I did not because you know I hate liquid glue. Yes. I'm using adhesive. I will recommend, however, that you do use liquid glue like Gina is doing uh, when you first get started because it gives you a little bit of wiggle room. I am not patient with glue because I tend to use too much. Right. I know. <laughs> oh, I know. Do you need another silicone craft sheet? I do. All right. So I'll tell you what, right there in the bottom drawer. Perfect. I, I forgot to get it out for her. I'll send her on a busy trip. All right. For this, because we used half inch tick, half inch tick marks, that's a mouthful. You are going to use half inch strips of designer series paper. Now I'm going to tell you that one of my samples comprises a much bigger piece of paper and wider tick marks, which means wider designer series papers. I went up to three quarters of an inch. Mm -hmm. So I want you to be very creative when you're at home and have fun with this. So two patterns, this is where Stampin' Up's designer series paper is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Double-sided, yep, double-sided. I chose two different patterns. It does not matter, in my opinion, what you start. I like to have the more subtle in the background, do you? I didn't do it this way. Okay, that's right. She did hers totally yeah. different. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm starting here at the top where I clearly have a half an inch. I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to use my silicone craft sheet underneath me in case I use too much adhesive. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work from this upper top left corner to that first tick mark, like so. And I am going to manipulate this on an angle. I'm trying to get my head in the camera of Eugenia, so you might have to push me out of the way. So we've got our first angle. Now, let me go ahead and let's do the next one. And then once I get a couple of these down and you get the idea, we're gonna let you show you her way. So again, next tick mark is here. Here's the next tick mark. So we're gonna go from here to here. Now these pieces of paper are just slightly wider than whatever your panel is. So I did two and a half inches. Right. I didn't see a need to waste a whole bunch of paper, no, right? absolutely not. And I love this because you can use scraps. So let me go ahead and just do one more here. And again, tick mark to tick mark, and you're gonna see that they're on an angle. Now, the very first time that you do this, if you have a piece of cardstock like mine that is not in half inch increments, which means this is five and a quarter, be patient, start with the half inch part at the top and leave that wonky section right. at the bottom. Okay. Awesome, okay, you continue yours and I'll go on with mine. All right, so I am using a liquid glue. This is an awesome little liquid glue carrying case. You can find this over in our craft room favorites under the shop tab. We have a lot of really helpful um, tools that are not necessarily Stampin' Up products, but they aid us here in the stamp studio. Yeah, fantastic. This is one of them because it keeps the glue all the way at the tip. So when I'm ready to use it, I can just go ahead right. and start. So like my mom, I'm gonna go ahead and just add some liquid glue here, but I'm doing from the tip to the ah, in between right on the paper. 
of the two tick marks here. Now, and this is a brave young person's move. See, yeah. I would never do that. And all I'm doing is like her, I'm matching up that tip right here. And then I'm going in between the two first tick marks. And I'm just going to press that down. Now, unlike my mom, <laughs> I am using the same designer paper for all of it. She did back and forth, mm -hmm. you know, more of a subtle tone at the bottom and then more of a bold tone at the top. But I do mm -hmm. want to share something because this designer series paper is coming out on Friday in the brand new mini catalog celebration brochure. Oh my God, Look how so beautiful this is. This is called Rings of Love. And you actually get this designer series paper absolutely free so when pretty. you purchase... $50 in product or more, you get this entire designer series paper set absolutely free. And it's just beautiful. I love it. The great thing about Celebration, this starts July 1st. It's going to be July and August only. Right. For every $50 increment in product that you purchase, please keep an eye on your product totals. We see people who place a $49 you know, order. Don't pay something for free. Right. Yeah. When you place $50 in product, you're going to be able to choose anything from these pages for free. Net paper is one of those. Yeah. And that's the, the great thing. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to keep going. And while my mom's putting okay. hers together. Yep. So here's that wonky part I was talking to you about. Remember I said this is five and a quarter. So that's a real narrow area. So instead of trying to put it here, I learned the hard way. I'm going to put it right there. This is where that silicone craft sheet is fantastic because adhesive liquid glue and hot glue will not stick to it, which means I don't have to worry about getting, you know, my work surface all yucky and sticky. All right. So there we go. We've got that first layer. Now I'm going to switch over to the next piece of designer series paper pattern. And for this one, I chose a more bolder mm -hmm. pattern to go in the other direction. Now you might be looking at this thinking, oh, this looks crazy. It kind of plays with your brain a little bit, right? It does. You can see Gina's already going in the other direction. So let me talk you through this. Again, this is going to be my wrong side and I'm using adhesive. And this time you're going to go from the upper right corner to the bottom of the prior designer series paper. So I'm gonna start up here at the top. Again, you want these strips a little bit longer than what you need. And then I'm gonna go like so. I wanna make sure I'm doing this right. Actually, I think it's gonna go like this. I almost lost my head there, right, Gina? Yeah. I always bottom. start at the second second Do you? line. All right, and then I'm starting back. Because, because, because mine is uneven. Remember, yeah. it's five and a quarter. I'm gonna start here at the top and I'm gonna go to the bottom of this one, okay? okay? I don't want this to be too, too shallow because I think it's going to look wonky when I put it on my card. All right, so I've got my next one here. But what you did is what? You just zigzag the same? Yeah, I did the zigzag the same okay, way. Well, I'm not doing the zigzag the same way. Am I doing this wrong? Why are you looking at me all funny? I think you're doing it wrong. No, I've made a gazillion of these. Are you serious? Look. It's important that you keep this lined up with this. Well, this is going to go like this. Don't you love it when the mother and daughter don't agree? Is this going to be right? I think it's right, isn't it? It's not. <laughs> I love it, but that's not right. I love it, sorry. Okay, come on. You know what? I'm working on an angle, and that makes me really crazy because I'm used to demoing this way. Tell me what I did wrong. You need to make sure that the edges meet up with the other edges on the same side. So I know you you have two different patterns. <laughs> so this should actually go like this. And this is why I always say I start I start in the second row. You start in the middle. So I can see what's happening. No, you know what? I have to show you guys something. I made a bunch of these before you the did. live. And, and honestly, out, right? I did too. They all came out fine. So I'm all actually right. glad it's you this time and not me. I always <laughs> mess up. <laughs> all right, you know when it's two of us, it's crazy. All right, so here's the deal. We're starting somewhere in the middle is what Gina's recommending. And yeah. she's saying start at the bottom left side. And go up to, to the, the top. top. Yep. Okay, so let's try it Gina's way. You know what? You know, the mom always wants to be right, but it doesn't always work that way, right? Okay, don't tell anybody I made that boo-boo. You know what the good news is, is before we do this, I practice. Good thing. And the good news is before we do it, we always make an addition. <laughs> in case we mess up. Oh my gosh. You know, the first time I made this, it played with my brain something horrible. And I was like, why can't I seem to get this? And I realized I wasn't using the corners of the designer series paper. Right. So that's really important. So make sure you go tip to tip. Okay, look at this up here. This is also another reason why uh, I chose it. to use all the same designer series <laughs> paper because it played with my brain a little bit. It does. Yours looks beautiful. All your samples are beautiful, well, but it would you. drive me nuts. Okay, so that's well, why I didn't okay, don't, do it. Don't tell anybody about that one. Okay, hold on a second. I hope you guys are all cracking up because guess what? This is real paper crafting. We make mistakes. We're not perfect. Look at that. All right. I have another one. Let's see if she can redeem herself. All I'm right. just really glad it's you this time. <laughs> oh, I, I love you. <laughs> all right. All right. Now, 
I know this looks horrible. We're going to pretend that we didn't see Lisa's mistake. Uh-huh. Those of you right. that don't think I make mistakes, you should see my trash can. Yes. All right. I got my sticky scissors okay. right here. This means, Gina, when you come to mom's house, you shouldn't use the good ones. Yeah. These the, are for the, the sticky stuff. Sticky. I come down around the back side and I push it down really good and hard. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to come in with your sticky scissors and you're going to cut against here. You're using that white card base as your guide to cut away the excess. I'm still giggling at myself. I just want you to know that. Please be careful because you know your scissors are really sharp. You're going to cut all the way around. And I know it's going to be hard to believe, but I did it right. You did it right. Yeah. And this is what mine looks like. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I don't know. But you know what? I love your tip about starting in the middle. It's just easier for it's me. It's so much yeah. easier because like Gina said, it can play with your mind mm-hmm. because what you're trying to do, especially in my case, when my cardstock length is an uneven measurement for the notch marks. Remember right. these were half inch and this doesn't have a half inch increment. That's going to make it a lot, lot easier. But it's super striking. It Oh my it gosh, beautiful. it is. And you know what? I can just prove to them that I did it right earlier today because uh, here are my practice cards. <laughs> I did a whole bunch. Not difficult. Okay? Not difficult. Yeah. Okay. All right. I okay. want you to move on because mine's going to involve some heat embossing next. Cool. That sounds awesome. Okay. So I'm going to move this to the side. I did go ahead and layer this. This is going to be important for finishing my card. I did that ahead of time because that's kind of boring to watch. I am using new product today, like I said Yay. before. This is Apple Harvest. It's going to be in the brand new mini catalog debuting on Friday, July which is 1st. July 1st. Super excited. I loved this. I know you were on the fence about it, but I, I have it. I love Ugh. it. I know last week you were mentioning that I had talked you into the last set that you, you used. You did. Mm-hmm. This is going to be one of the sets you're going to purchase. I probably am. I love it. I absolutely love she it. She likes to spend my money. I will tell you that the card she has tonight with this, you're going to flip over. <laughs> All right. So let me go ahead and get started with this. It is um, just a stamp set so it's just red rubber it doesn't come with coordinating dies or anything like that which you probably aren't surprised if you know me because i fussy cut everything she loves to fussy cut. i do love to fussy cut it is therapeutic to me i know there's a lot of fussy cut haters out there <laughs> and i know there's also a lot of fussy cut lovers so this is why i'm using some of my favorite i'm just going to stamp this right in the middle i am going to be cutting this out but i wanted to show you a little technique or a little bit of tip it's on how to use alcohol blends from Stampin' Up. These are the Stampin' Blends. I love them. It comes with a light and a dark. Um, they have two different sizes. You can see by notated by the thicker end. This is a brush tip notated by the thinner end. This is a pen tip. Very useful when you have smaller detailed images mm-hmm. in areas like this. So this is really hard to get to. Yeah. Perfect for your pen tip. Mm-hmm. So I personally like to use the lighter color and then build with the darker color. Yep. There's no right or wrong way of doing this. That's just my way of doing it. So I'm actually going to be using the brush tip. I'm just going to show you really quick on how to go ahead and color and shade with the alcohol blends. Now, it is important that when you use this brush tip that you don't scrub. Right. Because you will damage that tip. It'll fray. Again, with time, though, that brush tip will naturally fray. That's just what's going to happen as you use it. It just means you well loved it. But to prevent it from fraying sooner, just make sure you are gentle. Right. No scribbling. Yeah, no scribbling. Yeah. And the other great thing about these is a good alcohol-based marker, that ink is going to spread because it has an alcohol base to it. Okay. You're also going to notice those gorgeous sketch marks. Yes. And that's exactly what I'm going to be using as a guide for my shadowing when I use my darker blend. So I am going to actually go in now with the pen tip. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of go down and kind of mimic the shadowing that's already there. Mm-hmm. And I'm just kind of going back and forth following that. Now, I'm going to let it dry for just a second. Yep. Remember, it's alcohol. It has to evaporate. Otherwise, right. if you go in too soon with your light oh, yeah. or your dark, so go ahead and blend the two, it's going to bleed. Right. And you do want some bleeding. That's what makes the effect, but you don't want it to go outside of the lines. So now what you do is now you're just going to pull, 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 pull. And once this dries, I have one completed. It looks a little bit different. It's my background. It's going to look exactly like this. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Just, just beautiful. It is so easy to do. I think alcohol blends are very intimidating. Yep. But they're not. It just takes some, like, just calm down. Take your time. (laughs) Have a good time with it. We have to like to color. We love to color. um, And I love the alcohol blends because they actually really make you look professional, don't they? Exactly. Gorgeous, gorgeous. All right, your turn. All right, so I'm going to cover up your memento pad because I'm going to have some fun. Okay. Okay? All right, I'm going to use a piece of vellum cardstock. 
And oftentimes this is a well overlooked product. A lot of people forget about vellum. Vellum can really do a great job on your cards. So I want to give you a couple tips. And the first tip I'm going to give you tonight is you can heat emboss on it. And you might be thinking, oh, that's not going to look pretty. Well, just wait and see. I'm going to be using Versamark ink for this. And before I get started, I want to get my little area here prepped and ready. I want to make sure all my powders and supplies are nearby. Now, I love to use a plastic spoon when I'm adding my embossing powder. That's just a Lisa thing. You can sprinkle it on if that's what you want. I tend to be very messy, which is why I don't like liquid glue. I think I mentioned that, right? So I love these clear snap containers. I do have them linked for you in my craft room favorites over on my website under shop, just in case you like them. I have one for each of my embossing powders and because I emboss a lot, this is a lot of containers of the white, okay? So I don't want you to think this was one package and this is how much you get. No, this is a bunch of embossing powder. So I'm ready to go. But one of the brand new products in the mini catalog that I was thrilled that they came out with is an embossing tool kit. Now I wanna show it to you. You might have noticed this little tray that's underneath here. It has a funnel on the side, so it's got a little cap on it. So if you emboss over this and pour your powder, obviously you can pour it back into the container you have it in. It also comes with this, this little brush, which means you can get all those little stray pieces out, love that, and these reverse tweezers, which are fantastic for those smaller pieces of cardstock. The champ to this edition is this. This is an embossing buddy powder bag. And before you emboss, I recommend you go ahead and tap a little bit on there where you're going to do your embossing to prepare your work surface. That's going to tell the embossing powder not to penetrate or stick where there isn't ink. That's going to help repel the flex. So with the Versamark ink, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to use two images. This is from the Sending Smiles stamp set. It's been very, very popular. It's in the brand new annual catalog that came out in May. So I love this because you can piecemeal your own flower. So I am going to start backwards. So I've got the stem first. I'm going to ink this up in my Versamark ink. And then I am going to stamp this here. Now, the reason I absolutely love to keep this on top of my silicone craft sheet is because otherwise you can't see it. This is going to make it easier for you to be able to align these pieces. And I'm just going to tip this just a little bit and I'm going to stamp that there. I always cover my Versamark ink when I'm in crossing because that powder can really, really make a mess. So I'm going to come over to here. I'm going to put that tray right inside and then I'm going to powder this. And the spoon makes it super easy. All right, so I'm just going to give it a tiny flick here. And I'm going to have Gina take that. All of a sudden, she became my Vanna. Sorry about that, hon. <laughs> and then I'm going to use my reverse tweezers for this. And now let me show you. The heat tool with Stampin' Up! is fantastic. And Case Tip is going to retain its heat for a longer period of time. You don't want to touch it. It has a collapsible stand for traveling. Two speeds. We're going to go on speed two. Now, when you emboss vellum, I want to give you a couple tips. Do your best to keep the paper flat. It's going to help prevent the warping. What you want to do is you want to work fairly close because once the vellum and the powder conduct the heat, that little powdery area right here, I'm going to lift it so that you can see it, is going to turn more of an enamel white finish. Now, once that gun gets hot, it's going to go lickety split. Do you see it start to turn? And then you're just going to work all the way up. Now, I'm not going to bore you and keep this on too, too long. Just going to take a couple seconds here. We're going to do the whole thing. And time elapsed photography because there's two of us stamping tonight. I do have one that's already finished, which is here. Isn't that stunning? I, love I absolutely that. love this. But how this comes together with this ribbon twist is really fun. So, so why don't you go ahead and work on yours next? All right, cool. So I actually have a focal point. I also am kind of known to go ahead and collage some things together. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Do you mind if I give you a wipe real quick? Sure. Okay, so this is a Swiffer cloth. I cut them in half because that embossing powder and the embossing buddy leaves powder and I don't want it to get on your pretty card. Oh, thank that's you. That's a great tip for you guys at home. All right, so like I said, I did go ahead and fussy cut some of these pieces out. I stamped a piece right on top. And what I'm going to do now is going to go ahead and assemble it together. I'm going to Beautiful. give you a few tips here on how to assemble 
and make a focal point. So what's really important is when you work in uh, focal points, you want to work in odd numbers. Um, I like to work in threes. You can work mm -hmm. in other ways, but I like threes. Threes are the best for me. You also want to work in a triangular pattern. And the reason for that is our eyes actually see in a triangular funnel shape. So you can see all the way out to your left and right. And then when you're focusing, you're focusing right in the dead center of something. So that's always a great tip for you. I'm just adding some dimensionals on the back of these. And now what I'm going to do is I notice that this kind of lines up here. Oh, look at so that. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of cover that. Remember, I have dimensionals, so it's going to give it a little dimension. Mm, so pretty. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one more on dimensionals. Okay, I have to say, this fussy cutting is really spectacular. <laughs> but, but what's great is this stamp set look. It, they're, they're large images. Yeah. So it's, it's not super around. detailed. I agree. All right. And I like to use this trick. So clearly I've already put my first layer on dimensionals. Mm -hmm. I want even more of a pop. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stack dimensionals. That's a good tip for you. Yep. I have two dimensionals there. You can kind of see it. And I'm just going to put this one, nestle it right there. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of adhesive. Normally I would say to use a little glue dot, but I have that. I didn't bring that out in time. And then I'm going to go ahead. Remember, I said work in odd numbers or triangular patterns. Mm -hmm. So you can see my triangular pattern it's right beautiful. there. I it's tucked beautiful. it and we're done. That's you know, I have to say at first, I was kind of sad that you covered up that beautiful coloring, but I cannot tell you how much it brings it to pops. the focal point. Yeah, absolutely. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Keep going. All right. I'm going to keep going. Okay. Now I'm just going to add some layers. I'm what color is ahead. that? This is soft suede. I Ooh, love, soft I love suede. that. Soft suede is a color that I think is well understated in the catalog. And I love it because it is a great fall color. And mm -hmm. you know, I don't have to tell you this, but fall's coming. Fall's coming. Maybe not in Florida, but fall's coming. <laughs> Matter of fact, we just survived a major uh, rainstorm right before we, we did, went live. Right before we went live. Okay, so I went ahead and put that down. Here is my card base. Now, interesting. Now, reminder, all the cutting dimensions mm -hmm. are going to be in the project yep. sheet. You can find that in the video description below. If you're watching live with us, that'll be linked towards the end of this demonstration. This is four and a quarter by nine, and all I did was score it at three and a half. Okay. Or you can do go ahead and make a, a four and a quarter by... 11. 11 and cut off two inches. Okay. I did the math there. I had to figure it out. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and add on some adhesive I know here. she's off camera, but she's just adding the adhesive. My bad. Okay. That's okay. And then I'm just going to add this to the top. You can see it kind of perfectly oh, fits there. the colors are striking. Now. But here comes the best part. Here's my best part down at the bottom. You bring this back in. And what... You probably don't know about this adhesive is it's very strong. Extremely. And sometimes it's hard to get started, and that's why I like to start it on my silicone craft sheet because it won't stick to it, but it also prevents me from ripping the paper. Mm -hmm. I know you like to rip the paper a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I do. All right, and I'm just going to end up with this down so at the bottom. your ribbon technique is going to be a border at the yeah. bottom of this I remember fold. this opens. Oh, this is gorgeous. Okay, and then I've already stamped the inside, and you're probably wondering, what did you do around the edges? All I did around the edges was take my blending brush mm -hmm. in my soft suede, okay. and I just lightly swirled. swirled around the edges just to give it some dimension, because white on this stark uh, crushed curry just was a little too wool in your face. Uh-huh, So I went good ahead, with this. Yeah, I went ahead and Gave it a little tiny border, so let me go ahead and put that in there. Also, if so you are part pretty. of our online stamping retreat, you know my bad thing that I do in crafting is add too much adhesive. <laughs> I think that's a family problem. <laughs> but I am at my mom's house. I'm using her adhesive, so I'm <laughs> just kidding. That's awesome. All right, and then let me go ahead and add a greeting because a greeting is always necessary. I went ahead and stamp this ahead of time. Same stamp set? Same stamp set. You can see it right here. It's oh. got a few cute greetings. All right, I think I'm sold. Oh, darn it all. I think you have to get it. And all I'm going to do is add some dimensionals on this. I think two is going to be Every time you enough. come here, you cost me money. <laughs> you overlook some good ones, but I also overlook some good ones. It's funny because we typically do not buy the same stamp sets. We really don't. We don't. Now, I'm going to start walking through. Uh, she's got one more embellishment. Go ahead and do it. All right. This is the Rustic Metallic Adhesive Back Dots. A mouthful. But I loved it because this uh, brushed kind of vintage, -y. vintage -y look yeah. went really good with everything that I had, including right. that soft sleeve. All right. Show me where you put these. All right. I will. Again, remember, I said I like to work in threes. I like to work in triangles. Oh, take your pick tool. Got to love that. I love this. Um, I didn't love it until you showed me how to well, love it. Well, I will tell you, the take your pick tool is $10. Yeah. It's going to come dual-sided. It has both a putty tip 
and it has an interchangeable tip here on the end. Love this. And you get a putty refill with it. Can't live without that thing. Oh, there look we it. go. That so you can see the triangular shape again. Gorgeous. And then your fun fold opens up. I'll tell you, that's a two for one. It's fun. All right. I'll see if I can try to pull my act together here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Five and a half by eight and a half. I scored it at four and a quarter. I did that before you joined me. None of us scores straight. So I'm just going to kind of make sure that I reinforce this properly. You remember that piece of vellum that we did? Well, guess what? We are going to actually end up adding this to the card base, but I want to give you a little bit of a tip. So I'm going to bring in that silicone craft sheet once again, and here was my twisted ribbon. So I'm going to flip this over, and I'm going to add my adhesive right here down the center, and I'm just working to the sides. Now, because the Stampin' Co Plus comes out in tabs, if I get a little zealous, I can kind of curl those to the back. I'm going to leave this on the silicone craft sheet so that you can see it a little bit better, but I'm going to turn it for my visual angle. I am going to adhere this left side to the vellum. This is why it's an odd size, why I did five and a quarter. And I'm looking to align it the very best that I can at the top and the bottom and the sides. And I'm going to press that in place. Now I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to give this a good cursory rub. Now, if you have been stamping for any period of time, you know that there are very few adhesives out there that do not show through vellum. So you might be thinking, what are you going to do there? Okay, so watch what I'm going to do. Remember I mentioned this comes out in little tiny tabs? So I'm going to put a little tiny tab there and a little tiny tab here where I know it's not going to show. So I'm putting it behind the embossed areas, just enough to stick it down. All right, now I'm going to leave it here. Remember, it won't stick because I have also a greeting, and I did this ahead of time. This is white embossing powder onto the same color Knight of Navy card base. And I'm gonna flip this over, and I'm gonna grab my mini dimensionals here, and I'm gonna add a couple to the back. This little thing right here is gonna become a real important feature of this card for two reasons. Well, not only is it gonna help finish it off, of course I wanted this here, and I'm gonna take off those little backings. Unlike Gina, my old hands are arthritic, so I am not able to pull those off really easy with my hands. You know, what is it tonight, Gina? I'm having all kinds of, like, problems. You're okay. Yeah, you here we it. go. I got this. All right, here we go. And then I am going to put this right down here. Now, I purposely aligned the right-hand side to the vellum, making it as straight as I possibly can. But you know what else this did? It gave me another place for me to add adhesive that will not show. So I'm adding it right here. And then this now is going to get adhered here. So let's go ahead and let's just center that on that card base and we're gonna tack. Don't rub from the front. We all have a habit of doing that, but you don't wanna lift your panels. We're gonna rub from the back and you know, we can't live without embellishments. So these are the iridescent pearls. Love these, love them. I wish you were here so you could see them. They are stunning, aren't they? All right, remember Gina talked about triangular formations, really important. So I'm gonna bring one down here and I'm gonna work with all small ones because I don't wanna gravitate away any visual interest from my image, of course, or that beautiful twisted ribbon technique. So here is my Love card. It. Isn't that so pretty? striking. Isn't it? And this is, look how great the vellum works with yeah. this background without taking away from hair. Yeah, and I absolutely love how your two different designer series papers just pop. It does. It makes the whole card. It does. Fantastic. So here is our first two cards, yep. but we got lots more. Yes, Are you do. ready? Okay, I'm going to push right. this off to the side. You go next. All right, so this is retiring. We're saying goodbye to it, but Aww. this is Crane of Fortune. This is another kind of fun fold, but basically when I showed my husband Cody this card, card he said I thought this was supposed to open down here and oh, I said that's a great idea <laughs> so all I did was make a belly band for it I didn't cut it off I just scored it in two different places and it opens up just like that oh my gosh that's awesome and remember all those cutting dimensions for this too right in that project sheet. isn't it incredible how one card can lead into the next card right. design I right. love how you did this and again this is just the same designer series paper zigzag you yep. didn't do two patterns nope this is beautiful. I do have to tell you that there are only a few days left with the Last Chance Sad. products, and you're going to want to make sure you check that because some of them are on sale, actually quite a bit of them. Mm -hmm. Head over to our website under shop under Last Chance products. And not to mention all the kits are uh, buy one, get one, 50% yes. off. Okay. Yes. So here are my, here's my first one. Bring yours yep. into camera view. Okay. So you got your two. Okay. okay. Here's my next one. So really, really simple, right? Love it. 
but I unfortunately had colored this beautiful image to go on the front of the card, and it, didn't and it was too much. So I thought, what the heck? Let's put it on the inside. Oh, I love it. It's a pop of love. So I just put it in there, and I absolutely love that I could kind of pop it up, and it just leads credence from that visually stamped background to the front. Really, really, really simple way to get started on this it. design. All right, you're next. All right, next for all my guy friends out there. Oh. This is a uh, brood for you. It is. Um, it comes with coordinating dies. Same ones. Same ones. I love those. Kind of, I did designer series paper on top of designer series That's paper so here. That's so cool. So this is paper in the back that yep. matches that. Yep. And then just... Oh, oh it's open. that breakaway front gives you lots of little area yeah. there to sign a little message. I love Super fun. It. And I don't know if you noticed, but this is puff paint. Yeah, you can't really see it, but maybe... That's okay. I'm going to be demoing it soon. All right. Next week, right? Right. All right. <laughs> but it's fun. It's in the new mini catalog. It you is. want to play with that. Fantastic. Now, I took things in a different direction, literally. Love it. This uses the Amazing Year stamp set. And I want to call your attention to something. Do you remember seeing this image? These are sister stamp sets, yep. which means the same artist at Stampin' Up! conceptly designed these, and they mix and match beautiful. This one is called Full of Love, and this one's called Amazing Year. So like Gina, we got a partial breakaway bottom, but yeah, I okay. actually made sure I was careful when I cut the designer paper because it had a direction. Mm -hmm. So mine now is going in the opposite direction for a breakaway front. Look at that embossing folder. Isn't that gorgeous? That's from the eucalyptus. It's cute, beautiful. And I love bling. I love it. Right? So those are my three. You got right. another one? Last one. I am using new product for the last one. I got All right. Into. I got one more. All right. This is the new card Yeti to Party <laughs> new stamp set. Me up. All right. This is the Yeti stamp set. You know, love, whimsical, everything. Had to get it. She is not a fan no. of it. But I like the Harvest one. I love the card. Though. I'm going to go ahead and kind of like let you get it but okay so i use a lot of new stuff here besides the yeti to party i also used a brand new uh, 3d embossing folder oh. and if you notice that that's vellum in the background it's beautiful it's printed yep and all i did was use that twisted ribbon technique in, from vellum it's and amazing. i made that background amazing and he's cute he's very little to color so but easy. i like what you did here for some dimension mm -hmm. you just used a light was it smoky slate yep and then i just go ahead and heat emboss Adorable. All right. Well, I promised you one that had a bigger background, and here it is. Now, I do have to give you a confession. The stamp set is now sold out. Remember, yes. I told you these last chance products are largely on sale. The designer series paper is called Artfully Composed. I checked this morning. It's on sale, and there's a little bit left. Mm -hmm. So hurry up. Wider, Love three it. quarters of an inch, which means I did three quarter of an inch marks. And if you look yep. carefully, I was careful not to erase it so that you, I could prove myself. All right. And I did zigzag this back and forth with double sided paper in two directions because my focal point was meant to be kept simple. I didn't want to take away from I this. I just added some linen thread behind there with charming sentiments, which were pretty partial too. Yes, we so are. we have a total here of eight, eight different cards and guess what we would absolutely love to know which one yes. is your favorite thank you for rescuing me tonight oh no problem that's okay <laughs> i rescued you last time yeah. well, all right trading. well there's something i want to make sure that there's a couple things yes. and the big announcements yes. coming up all right so first of all head over to lisastampstudio.com if you're brand new there, scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see the word subscribe. Yes. You're going to want to sign up for that free weekly e-newsletter because guess what? I include a PDF tutorial project there that is not shared on any of my other platforms. It's a no frills thing. Would love to have you check it out. Yep. While you're on my website, you can request your catalogs and you can also check out our vast PDF tutorial library. Mm -hmm. Hundreds and hundreds of projects there for you to be inspired on. But here comes the exciting part. Yeah. You know, I kind of figured since you were already here today. Right. And next week really is Monday. It's July 4th. Right. It's our normal Monday live. Right. I want you to come back. Okay. So she's going to be back <laughs> live with me on Monday, July 4th. But guess what? We decided to take the 4th of July U.S. celebration and make it even bigger. Yep. We are going to do a product giveaway yes. during that live stream. Now, don't worry because some of you are like, oh, fireworks. We got you covered. We're yes. going to give you 24 hours. We'll provide all the information on how to enter for that giveaway during the live stream. And why don't you tell them how many products we're going to give away? We're giving away four different, like, 
big products. So we're anything from usable stuff, reusable consumable stuff, adhesives, papers, gems. We're gonna put it. Yep, it is U.S. only. Sorry to break it to you, but we are extending it 24 hours, so those who are watching fireworks can hang around. But you're not gonna want to miss it because we're kind of doing a challenge too next week. We are. Next week is a big deal. It's a holiday. And I figured since we were going to spend some of the day together, I said, why don't you stay? And she was like, I will. <laughs> so it's going to be a lot of fun. And I hope that you can be here yes. with us next Monday, July 4th, 8 p.m. Eastern time, right here on my YouTube channel. Thank you all for being here with Thank us you. tonight. And thanks for helping me. Yeah, <laughs> we look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye-bye.